Hello everybody, I'm going to be showcasing how to unlock the Late to the Party achievement in Legends of Kindermesh. This is an achievement that all Android users should get unlocked automatically because they're going to be late to the party when the game finally arrives to their platform. But for now, the only way to unlock this achievement is to win a specific combat encounter that spawns a sorcerer on round 4. So, in order to unlock this achievement, I'm going to be using a very particular party. I'm going to be using Rakesun. Now, Rakesun's other abilities are not going to be as helpful here. I'm just going to be focusing on the starting ones, so you don't have to worry about leveling him up too much. Just unlock him by beating the game initially, and then come back here when you're ready to start achievement hunting. So, he benefits from keen focus. This is important because we're not really going to get a chance to use any of our abilities on the first turn of the combat encounter that we're looking for. And so, other upgrades like lock and load are going to be very helpful in buffing all of our units when they start the next turn because we're only going to get three turns to actually complete our goal here. So the Bombardier is actually handy for more reasons than just this. She's also going to get four attack damage when she's at level two. This is crucial because there are several enemies that spawn later on during the encounter that are going to deal or that they're going to take four damage in order to kill. And so we want to be able to deal area damage that insta kills them so that way we can get them out of the way. She's also going to be useful because of this. This will deal explosive damage and it will waste the turn of one of the trolls, which can be handy because these trolls have some pretty nasty powers. In particular, the troll chieftain has that ice rain ability, which deals six damage total and it will freeze its target. So that's pretty broken. However, we can really overcome a lot of the difficulties with these troll enemies thanks to the orc cleaver. Now the orc cleaver has the very handy counter attack ability, which allows him to deal his melee damage, which we see right here, against the first enemy that attacks him. But once you get him to rank two, he has the opportunity to use parry stance as his level two promotion. And this is the ability that's going to make this achievement possible. First, the damage reduction that he gets allows him to tank more of the damage from these enemies, and it's damage reduction per attack, which means that the Ice Rain ability that the Troll Chieftain has, which deals two damage three times over, is going to be reduced to one damage three times over, so overall he's only taking three damage, which is really handy. But the most important part here is that he's going to be able to counterattack all incoming attacks. This even includes getting hit twice in a row from the same enemy, because the Troll Champions can do that. And because he's going to get hit twice in a row, he's going to counterattack twice in a row, and that means that he's going to be dealing his attack damage twice. And since he'll be at level 2, this is going to deal 5 to 7 damage, or 10 to 14 damage total to that single troll champion, along with 5 to 7 damage to all the other trolls that are attacking him. So he's going to be able to deal a huge amount of damage in a single turn, as long as he doesn't get overwhelmed and killed. So, what we need to do is go to Stormcloud's Winter, and make sure that we can make it to Argyleham in a good enough condition that we can actually handle this. So, Argyleham is this spot right here in the middle of the adventure. It will always be here every single time. However, the thing that's not consistent is the actual combat encounter that you get. There are three different ones. One that has yetis, one that has trolls on the inside of the tavern, and then one that has trolls on the outside of the tavern in the same area that the yetis spawn. And so, you need to be able to get that specific one of the trolls on the outside of the tavern in order for the um, common encounter with the sorcerer to spawn. So that's what I'm going to do. So first things first, we need to make sure we know how to get to this uh, combat encounter in a good enough condition to, um, not <laughs> to not just get killed immediately when we actually get there. So the thing that I'm going to prioritize is avoiding any and all true damage enemies. So for example, the Winter Wolves and Spiders here are a hard counter to this party because we have two melee units and then we have this one ranged unit that does poor damage, which means that the Winter Wolves can run amok on us. So we want to try to avoid that. However, something that's going to happen here is even if you prioritize going to the Trolls, you can still get Winter Wolves in the combat encounter and you need to know how to deal with them. One useful thing about uh, Rexon's Keen Focus ability is that it buffs his damage by two and so this is enough to 
guarantee that Vicious Lunge can kill one of these Winter Wolves because it would deal 6 to 8 damage instead. However, I'm not going to get to use that just yet, so let's take a look at this combat encounter. These trolls are going to move up 1, 2, 3 probably, so they're not going to be in range even if I move them up here. However, these uh, next trolls, they will be. This one, he's probably going to move like this down here, so he's going to be in range to attack. Same thing with this one, he's going to be in range to attack if I move him down here. Or he's going to have to move here because the other trolls is occupying this space. It depends on which one's first. So as you can see here, this one is the one that gets to attack first. So he's going to move, and then probably come up here. And then this one will move, and then he's not going to be able to attack. Uh, because the other troll is going to be in the way. So I'm going to move up here, knowing that this troll is going to come over and attack the orc. Now the other thing that I can do is keep keep the bombardier over here and just wait her turn so that way she can finish off or that, that she can deal uh, more damage with Big Bada Boom because she has better range for it. So that's what I'm going to do. Likewise with Rake Sun, I'm going to keep him over here and benefit from Keen Focus so that way he can uh, insta-kill one of the Winter Wolves. So that's what I want to do. So here come all the trolls. They're not actually able to reach him just yet. So what I can do is prioritize attacking one of these guys. Now, the, the tricky thing about this is that if I come up here and attack him, I can either hit him with this, which will um, put him at 1 HP and cause him to retreat. I can attack him with this, which will not be enough damage to cause him to retreat, which will mean that he attacks the orc, triggers the counterattack, and then forces him to, uh, well, it, it will force him <laughs> to receive another counterattack from the orc, and that will actually finish him off. So it's actually safer to use this than this, if I want to finish one of them off. However, I'm not going to be in that good of a position. You see, this troll here, if I, if I move him here, if I move the orc to attack this troll, I'll kill him, sure, but then the bombardier would not be able to use her um, dummy attack, to distract these enemies. It's just not a good position. So, what I could try to do is move the orc down here, and what will happen is this troll will be prompted to move down and and either attack the orc or attack Rakesun. Now, if he attacks Rakesun, then Rakesun is just going to be at a disadvantage because I need him to protect the bombardier over here. And that's not something that I want to deal with. So, I don't really have any choice but to move down here, and now, yeah, I'm just going to move down here and then try to finish off this guy. So here he comes to try to attack Rakesun, it's fine. So let's move this bomb over here, and this is going to cause uh, the Winter Wolf to attack. So now let me move over here and lunge at this guy. Now, Rakesun, unfortunately, is just going to get like as far away as possible because that's just how his thing works. But it's fine. He's not getting attacked yet. So now, I'm going to move over here, and I can try to attack one of these two enemies. What I'm going to do is prioritize attacking this one because this troll will attack the orc and then receive a counterattack. So here we go. Counterattack, and he's dead, which is very good. Now... Shoot him with the bomb. Boom. Just two damage. This is why the bombardier is not very good at the start, because she can't damage these wolves. And as we see here, we did the minimum damage possible, which is unfortunate. Let's try to attack him. And good, he's been finished off. So, unfortunately, didn't get good luck, and Rickson had to take damage. This is just an unfortunate truth with this party, is that they're just not very good at the beginning parts of this adventure. However, we do have this specific rock encounter. Whenever you see that rock uh, anywhere on the map, I don't see it anywhere else, but you can use the ice pick to get over it. You can also use the um, rope item here to get over some other specific um, dice roll events, guaranteed. So that's always a good one to go for. So now I'm coming up here. Even though I was talking about avoiding tree damage, there's a shop here, and the shop can be useful because it might get one of our... Um, units invigorated with a potion, or it might give them an armor or a damage boost, and so that's something that we want to use. So now with this combat encounter, 
there's uh, two enemies here. And I can blow them up pretty nicely with all of this destruction. So that's what I'm going to do. Now the orc here, I'm going to finish off this guy right away. And now this uh, troll here is going to be buffed. But he's um, not going to be able to heal because he's going to take uh, fire damage. And that limits his regeneration. Or rather it uh, negates his regeneration. So now this troll can move 1, 2, 3 in his next turn. And so I'm going to move Rake's son back just by one. Keep him there so that he can gain extra damage. So here comes all the trolls. So yeah, here he comes. Now the orc is going to counterattack him. And now I can move... Let's see. Yeah, he's the, the first one to have a turn. So I'm just going to move this over here right now. And cause him to blow himself up. So yeah, there we go. Now to move the orc down. So I'm just going to move him down here. There's not really much else I can do with him. Now as for Rake's son, I can come over here and then finish this guy off immediately. This will put him in danger of the other troll enemies, unfortunately. Yes, yeah, so look, here he comes. So now he's going to deal some more damage to him. But at least I was able to take out one of those trolls. So now let me move the bombardier over here. Blow this guy up. And now, let me move the orc over here and hit him. So yeah, he's going to heal up to 3 health and then attack him again and prompt him to counterattack. So that's nice. And now this troll, he'll be out of range for uh, attacking Rake's son. So I'm just going to move him back. There we go, we're safe. Likewise, the troll champion, he can't do anything either. So let me uh, just blow him up here. And now the um, orc is going to be able to deal enough damage to finish him off with this attack. So there we go. Now as for Rake's son, I'm not going to be able uh I'm not going to be able to finish him off just yet. And he has a risk of getting killed here. So I'm just gonna pull him further back and just keep him here even longer. So there you go, the orc. He had to take a little bit more damage, but that's preferable to Rake's son taking the damage. So let's move out. Blow him up. Or rather, soften him up, because all, all we managed to do was damage his armor. And then come out here, attack him, and now Rakeson is able to uh, cleanly finish him off. So here we go. And Rakeson was able to heal by 1 HP. So, because I was patient and didn't try to just rush him down with Rakeson, I was able to uh, gain the extra health back. So now I have the opportunity to level up the orc, so let's get parry stance right away. I wanted to do that right away, even though there's a chance of a uh, luck-based event coming over here. So let's let him speak. Let's give him some food. So there we go. We got an armor buff to the two units that it doesn't matter for, but whatever. So now let's come over here. And we have the opportunity for a um, max health boost, but we don't have the gold for it. And this is the unfortunate thing. If there's a weaponsmith wagon here, or a sharpening stone for sale to increase your damage by one... You're going to need extra gold in order to afford it, because there's only 90 here. But there's at least an invigorating potion, so I'm going to hold on to that. Now, as for this next en encounter, it's a little bit um, risky to level up a hero right away. But I know that I'm going to get my uh, companion either on the way up here or on the way up to this middle part. And I'm going to keep my... Um, a strategy consistent, so I always want the Bombardier to be at uh, level 2. So I am going to level her up here, knowing that the Companion can show up, which he did. So here's the Wizard. And see, of course, if, if you uh, were confident that you could get to uh, enough XP to level up a Companion to level 2 three times total, so I've done it twice already, then it would be quite wise to level up a Companion like him to level 2, because he can perfectly one-shot a Winter Wolf. But unfortunately, that's not the case. I'm trying to keep it consistent here, and so I'm just going to level up the Bombardier. So here we go with these Winter Wolves. Now this is probably the worst combat encounter uh, that you could get with the Winter Wolves. The Spider ones are still far worse, but either way, this is this is bad. So what I'm going to do is move Rixen up here and keep him so that way he can still uh, perform a one-shot with his attack. Now what I can do is spawn the bomb somewhere over here. 
I'm just gonna uh, plop it right here so that way uh, one of the winter wolves will attack it. So now, between these options, I'm just going to attack this one. There you go, I was able to deal a good amount of damage to it. Now the orc, I don't want him in danger of these winter wolves just yet, so I'm just going to uh, pull him back, keep him here. As you can see, we're kind of uh, cornering ourselves in the middle of the map, but it's fine. So there you go, I was able to break this guy out of the uh, ice prison. Now I can uh, either free her... Or I can uh, keep her there, but I'm going to free her. So now let me try to finish off this dog. Thankfully, he didn't dodge it. So there you go. She's going to get attacked. She's going to die. Doesn't matter. There's, there's not really much you can do about it. Now, between these options, I can either finish off this uh, last winter wolf here, or I can try to kill one of these winter wolves. Between those options, I'm just going to finish off this one. So there we go. Now Bombardier, she can either deal 4 damage with uh, splash damage, or just 4 damage overall. Well, 4 damage with 1 splash damage, or 4 damage total. So that seems like an objectively uh, better option for me. Now, the Orc can move 1, 2, and then be in range to attack either one of these guys. But, I'm just going to uh, pull back and attack this one, because I don't want the Arcane Wizard to be at risk of getting hit. So now, let's hope that he actually manages to uh, land this attack. And of course, he dodged it, so now he's going to freeze the orc, deal the maximum damage that he possibly could with that attack as well, because I'm just that unlucky. And there you go, now I can finally finish him off. So let me just overkill him with this big explosion. And there you go, so unfortunately, the orc had to take as much damage as he could have there. But that's just how it goes. So, because we're coming right up to this event, I'm going to use the tent. So everyone slept soundly and got invigorated. Now this is the thing that I hope for. You can also potentially get exhausted, but um, you have exhausted potions to counteract that. So you might as well just use them up as soon as that happens. Generally, it's a good idea to um, try not to risk those sort of things if you're trying to make it up to the boss, at least in my opinion. But the end goal here is just to complete this achievement. So that's what we're doing. Now, I also want to get an invigoration on um, some of these units, specifically the orc here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to invigorate him. Now, hopefully, we don't lose that on the way up here. So let's repair the cart. We got lucky. And now we have a blessed dice roll on here. Okay, good. So between these options, you can either level up Rig Sun or level up the uh, fourth companion that you get, who might not always be the arcane wizard. But because I have... Uh, these options here. Um, I'm going to. I'm just going to level up Rake Sun. Now, the reason why it's really helpful to level up Rake Sun is because one, he could be um, damaged on the way up here due to all the true damage, uh, you know, wolves and spiders that you can encounter, and so it's just useful to heal him here. But also because this bonus damage means that he can now one shot a troll uh, with keen. Where is it? With with keen focus. So this will be increased to 8 to 10 damage. So you can one-shot a troll and also just deal even higher damage in general. All these attacks are going to deal just more damage. And so it's really helpful to level him up. He also gets 2 healing instead of 1 for landing a killing blow. Okay. So as you can see here, we did not get the combat encounter that we wanted. And if I exit out of the app like this, and then load the app back, This is going to be loud. <laughs> yeah, so if I load this back up, go back to Stormcloud's Winter, and then go back to Argyleham, I'm going to be stuck in this combat encounter that isn't the one that I want. This means that I have to restart the entire match, or the entire adventure, until I eventually get this. So I have to forfeit and lose all my progress, and then start back up again. But hopefully, the tips that I showcased here are good for you to know how to make it up to this spot in good condition. So as you can see here, I have other events to go through. I'm going to prioritize going to this uh, RNG event here because um, I'm less likely to get damaged. I'm going to use the orc as well because in case he gets hurt, 
I know that I'm going to level him up right away, so I want that. So let's move up here. And now what I want to do... Oh, okay. I'm just going to get two healing potions, so there we go. Let's move up here. And now buff the orc's armor. That's definitely a priority. Then move up here to this well. This is another RNG event, so let's uh, block the axis with the orc. So yeah, he, he didn't get lucky. So, heavy damage was suffered to everyone. He also lost the armor that I just got for him, so that's unfortunate. So let's throw a coin. We got a little bit of XP, so at least I can level up the orc, get parry stance. So now let's go to these other RNG events. So I've given away the picks that I was going to use, but it's fine. We can still use these uh, companions for RNG. So there we go. We're still building up XP. Now here we go with this. So we've got uh, double the chance of success. Thankfully, we, we did uh, get successful. So now on the way up here, I'm going to get my fourth companion. It's guaranteed. So watch. I'm going to confidently come up here. And here's the companion. So somehow, it's also the Arcane Wizard. Fine with me. But I have to prioritize upgrading the Bombardier because I need her to have four damage to help uh, one-shot those enemies. So let's hope that I get the combat encounter that I'm looking for this time. Nope. This is also the other combat encounter that you can get. It's the one with three yetis. So this means that now I need to go back, forfeit this encounter, and then load it up all over again. So let's do that. Yep, skip all this. Do not care. All right. So between these options, I'm just going to prioritize um, going down this middle path here. These uh, three combat encounters in a row. And then going up to this shop here. And then uh, hugging the left. Because I don't want the uh, combat encounter that has more dangerous enemies. I'm going to fast forward this ahead. Because I know that uh, it's just going to be repetitive. Me doing all these combat encounters in a row. Because I want to showcase the strategy to actually beating this um, specific sorcerer encounter. So, I'll see you in a bit. Hello everybody. I finally got the Argyll Ham encounter that I actually want, the one of the sorcerer. So, I'm going to be showcasing how I beat this. On this run, I happened to get the knight as my fourth companion. Now, the Q order is randomized for every single time you load this mission. The troll here happens to move forward right away. But my plan involves not attacking right away, so I'm just going to keep the Bombardier there and gain the extra range from not attacking. However, because I have these melee units that I wasn't going to use a single skill with anyways, I might as well attack him. I don't use the parry stance on the very first turn for the orc. I prefer to use it on the second turn, so I really am not wasting a single move here by attacking right away instead of using parry stance. I wouldn't have done that anyways. So now I'm going to move Rixen over here and keep him for the bonus damage. Now the Bombardier has extra range because she hasn't attacked, so I'm going to deal some area damage over here by spawning that bomb there. It's going to waste the turn of this troll champion, which means that he's not going to move anywhere. This is very important. Now, because this troll is up here, it's tempting to move the knight and try and attack him, but this isn't going to work. She doesn't have the damage output to finish him off anyways, so it's just a waste. Instead, I'm going to move her down here in preparation for the enemies that are about to come. Likewise, I'm not going to attack him. I'm purposefully going to be using the parry stance ability. And as you can see here, he takes one damage from each of those ice spikes, which is very handy. And he's broken free from the attack right away. This is also really helpful because we've just wasted the ranged attacks of both of these enemies. So now they're guaranteed to use their melee attacks on the orc, which is perfect because that's going to trigger parry stance. So, because I've leveled up the Bombardier, I do 4 damage with her. That's perfect for one-shotting this guy, so that's what I'm going to do. Now this uh, Cho Chieftain's going to come up here and deal damage to him. This is fine, because he's attacked him twice, he's going to get counterattacked twice, and finished off completely in that one move. So now I'm going to send the Knight all the way over here to stun this enemy, that way he can't attack back. And he's also going to take extra damage from the Orc's move, so now I can move him up here to attack. And because it's his turn now, he's regenerated his armor, which means that he's going to be able to withstand another attack from an enemy. And now that he's taking damage twice from this enemy, he's going to counterattack twice and finish him off completely as well. I also have the opportunity 
to move Rixen up here and finish off this caster. But rather than move him to this spot that's closer to the Acolyte, I'm going to move him a little bit further back, which will tempt that Acolyte to go over to the Orc and deal damage to him with his dagger. And the good thing about this is that he has damage reduction, which means he can resist the attack completely, counterattack, and finish that guy off. So now there's only that one enemy left, and I can finish him off with the Bombardier, but in case there were more enemies left over, I'd have three more units to deal damage with to finish off the rest of these guys. And that's very important because you might not have all of the increased stats or invigoration that my units had. Also, in case your mission starts off with a worse queue than mine, you can just exit the app and reload it so that way you can get a different queue order. You can see in some of the other footage that I've got that my units are in a different order than before. And that's because even though I'm in the same exact um, adventure, I just reloaded the game and I got a different queue. So you can keep on reloading it until you get a queue that works out for you. You don't want to move any of the enemies away from the middle part at the very start of the match, which is why it's important to keep all of your units focused in the center so that the trolls don't start to try to spread out. Because sometimes they will try to go to the left or try to go up in order to flank you and you don't want to do that. So try to keep your units relatively packed together in the middle there to deal extra area damage to the Bombardier and to deal extra damage with the Orc's counterattack because you want him to be able to parry every single enemy. So with that information, I hope you're able to get this achievement. In my opinion, it is the most difficult achievement in the game. So best of luck. Bye.